it's quite a long story short, I started to do business in uh, Sierra Leone, right? And then this was, I, my friends, they used to do sihr, but they never used to call it sihr or magic. They actually thought that this was a part of Islam. So, and I know there's differences of opinion here and there about amulets and things like that, but they used to have amulets and they used to think that there was Quran inside these amulets, but in reality it wasn't. It was, it was sihr. You know, I opened one of these amulets once and it's just numbers and uh, names of like shayateen and things like this. Horrible things, bro. And they used to believe that these things protect them from the police. From right? the police. From the police, right? Because they used to do certain things. And they actually gave me one of these things to protect myself from the police, right? And I'll I I carried it for maybe two years, bro, in my pocket. I carried this amulet. That was like a wallet or something or a phone to you. Yeah, bro. It was constantly in my pocket. It was like a small amulet. At the time, I didn't know what was inside. Right. But these Africans just said, look, this is going to protect you from this, that and the other. And I'm like, I wasn't, I didn't believe in anything. Right. I'm like, okay, just put it in my pocket. But bro, you know, Shaitan, he does things to make you believe that that's protecting you. So I remember one time I got pulled in Sierra Leone. The policeman pulled me. Right. And he pulled out all the things in my pocket and he pulled this thing out and he went like this. <gasps> Right? And it's like the thing burnt him, bro. And he said, no, no, take take your things. And he gave me all my things back oh, and then I went. So I'm now starting to get Iman in this thing. I don't realize that it's not the thing that burnt him. Right? Shaitan wants me to have Iman that this thing is protecting me from police. Yeah. So Shaitan came and maybe touched him or pinched him or flicked him or hit him or whispered to him. I don't know. But the bottom line was that Shaitan scared this policeman and I attributed that incident to this thing. Do you understand? Yeah. And this happened about three or four times, bro. Oh, like another policeman once, he pulled me uh, and the same thing happened, bro. The same thing is like, ah. Yeah. So anyone who doesn't have knowledge starts to have a man in these amulets thinking that, oh, so, you know, I'm getting power now. You know, I can just buy one of these amulets. I can do what I want. I can go and steal. I can do any crime I want. I can sell drugs, yeah. whatever it is, because they, they're starting to have iman. They're starting to do shirk. And to a certain extent, shaitan will assist. And Allah, of course, you have to understand that this is all with the permission of Allah. Nothing can happen without the permission of Allah. Yeah. But Allah allows, sometimes allows evil things to happen because there's wisdoms. You are mis literally misguiding yourself. Does that make sense? So, bro, I've seen this many, many times, right? There's many stories. I don't like to go too much into it because the point's been made. But this is how, subhanAllah, I, I, it was the beginning of kind of starting to have iman mm. and belief in these, these false things. Another time I went to the northern parts of Sierra Leone uh, in the jungle. It's called Kabbalah. Kabbalah. Right, and it's known as a city for sihr, and it's very evil, bro. There's literally magicians sat in the jungle, and there's people queuing to see these magicians. Now, of course, they don't call them the magicians; they call them the sheikh, and they look like Muslims. They have beards. They they dress like Muslims. They have the Quran. They have uh, you know beads. They have the hat. They look like a sheikh, and maybe they're knowledgeable. Maybe they know Arabic. Maybe they even memorize Quran. But somewhere along the line, they've learned about sihr and they're dealing with the jinn. And I've seen this, bro. You know, I've seen them, uh, you know, they would say that they're speaking to this jinn, they're speaking to that jinn, they, they, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And people will, will come with different problems and try to get the magician to deal with that issue. So if you have a court case or if you have an exam or if you have any issue in your life, uh, maybe you, you, you're having an issue with uh, you can't have children or maybe you want to marry somebody. Any of these issues, these so-called magicians can fix it for you. But it's haram bro and it's shirk and it's just fooling people. But people don't realize that when they get involved in these things, it takes you outside of Islam bro. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So this was kind of a very important point to me. And then when I came back from Sierra Leone to, to England, I spoke to my Libyan friend and I said, look, you Muslims, you've got power. You know, I seen this happen. This Muslim gave me this thing and the policeman ran away and this other Muslim did this. And, and my friend said, no, 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 this is haram. This is shirk. What are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm not a Muslim. He said, no, no, I, we believe it's true. We believe these things can happen, but it's haram in Islam. So I was like, what do you mean? So he sat me down and he showed me a video by Dr. Bilal Phillips. So that same night when I watched this lecture by Dr. Bilal Phillips, my friend gave me a copy of the Fortress of a Muslim. You know, the small yeah. uh, book of du'as. Some of them are ayah from the Quran and some of them are hadith. Yeah. Now we know that both are wahi, right? Of course. You know, subhanAllah. You know, and you know, but of course the Quran is a, 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 has an extra status, right? Definitely, because it's kitab Allah, yeah? And I was saying to my friend, this is different. This one is different from this. Like, and, and he said, yeah, that's the Quran, that's the hadith. And then I'll turn the page, I'd read that and I'd read. And every time the, the, the ayah from the Quran, I just felt that it's different, bro. And I'm reading it in English, bro. SubhanAllah. Right? So I got onto one ayah. You mean the transliteration or the translation? Translation and the transliteration. Okay. It's got the Arabic, the transliteration. And you just felt like it's different. And, 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 the, and the English, right? But even in the English, bro, I was like, this is different to that, right? And subhanAllah, bro, I, when I, um, I got to Surah Falak, right? And it speaks about, you know, those who are envious, they're blowing in knots, tying knots, you know, at the daybreak, etc. I, I started crying, bro, because... I'd witnessed this in Sierra Leone. Wow. I'd seen them rolling, literally, these Tawiz things with Seher in. They were naked, bro. Uh, literally sat in the river, rolling the, the Seher. Literally, sometimes they would do it like what I now know to be sunset time. And sometimes they do it at sunrise, bro. And they're making the Seher and they're blowing, bro. SubhanAllah, I seen it, bro. And that ayah was the one that really sealed it for me. I said, this is the protection from this. And that's when I started to put my iman now in this little book. So I moved it from the Taoist thing and I started to now, this, this little book went everywhere with me, bro. I was just reading the du'as, all the du'as, everything, you know, and that became the protection. 